Yeah, it makes you look forward to fall. We will likely see today going down as the hottest day coast to coast in the lower 48 so far this summer, and it might be topped tomorrow. So by the numbers, you just mentioned it, the 146 million from the Pacific Northwest to Texas to Chicago, all the way through the Northeast, so many of us included. And I know we don't have Florida and Georgia and Mississippi and South Carolina included on this, but trust me, it's hot there too. They're just more used to it. So as far as the rest of the week, tomorrow will be the peak of the heat wave in D.C. We do have a chance of hitting 100 in the nation's capital. New York City will be mid-90s. We'll still be in the mid to upper 90s, St. Louis, the Nashville. And remember, those are the temperatures taken in the shade. And then when you add in the humidity, this is the feels-like temperature when you walk outside on your skin. D.C. could be one of the hottest spots in the country tomorrow with the feels-like temperature of 110 degrees. That's dangerous categories. Got a feel for anyone working outside. New York, about 105. And the only relief we're getting from this heat is with thunderstorms. We did have them cool off Washington, D.C. We had a nasty line of storms go through the Great Lakes. We have a million people without power in Michigan, Wisconsin, Indiana, and Ohio right now. And think about how hot and humid it is. And sleeping tonight with no air conditioning it is going to be rough. So we could still see some additional storms, 56 million people at risk. And if all of that wasn't enough, we still have to watch what happens with Tropical Storm Fred in the days ahead over the top of the Dominican Republic. Right now, it's a very weak, disorganized system. We're not going to see a lot of problems in the next two days. But once these storms get into the Gulf of Mexico, we get worried, and for good reason, some of the warmest water on the planet, that's the fuel for these storms. The Hurricane Center has it near Key West Saturday, and then up towards the Florida Panhandle come late Sunday night into early Monday morning. Shep, as of right now, this does not look like it's going to get his act together fast enough to be a devastating hurricane. But as we know, the warm waters in the eastern Gulf have surprised us in the past. We're still on edge and watching it now, but there's no reason for anyone to take action. You know, Bill, on this heat wave, the National Weather Service is saying oh, yeah. the lows at night are even going to be sweltering. That's where it's dangerous. We call it the urban heat island effect. We know for a fact that the pavement, the more we put down, the more buildings we build, the less more trees we cut down, the hotter it gets in the cities. And especially for the areas that don't have air conditioning, they don't get the relief at night when they open up the windows. Some of the city hot low temperatures tonight will be in the mid to upper 80s in areas like Philadelphia and New York City. So for people without air conditioning, that's where it gets dangerous because they don't get to cool off. And as I said, tomorrow, Jeff, even hotter. Wow. Bill Karens, thank you.